No, that is not clickbait. Your eyes do not deceive you. That is a mushroom man number two in the flesh. And I'm going to break it down on how this deck list got third place at an OCG tournament. But before that, let's hear from the sponsor of this video. Into the AM is a clothing company specializing in graphic tees. And if you're going to specialize in graphic tees, they have got to look good. And boy, do these look fantastic. I love them. My girlfriend loves them. They're super comfortable and they've got different colors and designs and even some basic tees if you're interested in that sort of thing. They also have some fantastic joggers. I could sit and play you in these all day. Sizing, easy as pie. You just plug in your height, your weight, boom, you're done. Another thing I love about Into the AM, their shirts, they actually go down my torso far enough. Sometimes shirts, normal shirts, they just don't go down. And I look like I have a beer belly. They're too short. So I love that about them. Also, also, you can get three graphic tees for $60 and an additional 10% off using my discount link. Now, let's get back to the video. Okay, so how did he do it? How did this madman bring Mushroom Man number two into the metagame? First, let's shout out our madman's name because I think that's only proper. He called himself TTO online. I don't know what that translates to, but I will link the source of this in the description of the video. But let's take a look at Mushroom Man 2 and see how it works. Okay, what does this card actually do? The controller of this monster takes 300 damage during each of their standby phases, okay? But during your end phase, you can pay 500 life points to give this card to your opponent. Um, so the first thing when I read this card was, mm, okay, so uh, that's weird. I thought it was probably just one of those time cards because it has life points associated with it, but no, it is actually not one of those time cards, right? And so I did some research. First of all, first thing I researched was when was Mushroom Man released? In Asia, it was released on October 22nd, 2002. And then this tournament happened on October 30th when this deck list stopped. 20 years later, almost to the day, October 30th, 2022, Mushroom Man number two probably makes its first ever real competitive tournament debut, um, or at least one that's been documented. And uh, I think that's just, that's just so fantastic. That's something that's just special about Yu-Gi-Oh, right? The card released 20 years ago, that's been unplayable for 20 years, finally makes its way into the spotlight. But if it's not time scamming people, how does this card work? Well, the key is in two things. One, it basically is forcing your opponent to activate an effect. Secondly, it also gives your opponent a monster. So just from the most basic level of things, right? It gives your opponent a monster. All the cash tier monsters say, if you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from hand. They all say that basically, right? So basically you can't use your cash tier monster. Okay. So you can't special summon them, which is huge. Secondly, it also forces your opponent to activate a monster effect and that triggers unicorn which lets you look at your opponent's um, extra deck and banish a monster face down now a lot of players are prepared for one extra deck banish but they also run diablosis the mind hacker which also banishes a monster from the extra deck face down so sometimes you can deal with one but your deck's not prepared to deal with two and so that's sort of where mushroom man number two comes in so it's not only good in the mirror match it also has some relevant relevant applicancy when you draw it. Number three, this deck doesn't really normal summon, doesn't need its normal summon. So it was looking for a normal summon to play and Mushroom Man number two just fits the bill in that case. Okay, it's a normal summon. I can use my normal summon. Number four, it's a warrior, not for some reason like other mushrooms, a plant, okay? It's, it's not like, you know, what you would, you would expect. For some reason, the original Mushroom Man is a plant. Okay, that makes sense. Every, any other mushroom in the game, Sylvan Komashru, a plant. This guy, He's a warrior. This guy's a, a straight up warrior. He's, he's here to do battle. He's not here to just grow, I, I guess. So for some reason, I don't know if that was a mistake, but someone made him a warrior. I don't know what someone looked at this art and said, yeah, that looks like a warrior, but he can be searched by Rhoda. Okay. And what's even crazier is not only can he be, he be searched by Rhoda, but you know, people that play Kash Tira, they're like, okay, you know what? That's one of the issues. If I get monsters stuck in my, uh, in my, in my main, my, I have monsters. I can't play. So I need a way to get rid of it. Well, they play Donner dagger for hire. And this takes two monsters with different types and basically gives you a scrap dragon effect for monsters, right? But it takes two monsters with different types. And the only card that you can normal summon in this deck that's also sort of searchable is Kashtira 
Rise Heart. And look who we have here. It is a warrior as well. So you can't even use your Rise Heart, your one searchable on the deck, to make Donner Dagger for Hire uh, as an out to this Mushroom Man. So it's just hilarious that it's a warrior. I mean, it's just amazing. It's like, it's it's actually, this card is actually played not as a meme. You know, it's not like, oh, I just put it into my deck because I want to have fun. Like, there is a legitimate strategy behind this card. And we can take a look at some of the other cool stuff in the OCG version of Cash Tier. You know, they got a lot of a lot of crazy stuff, basically. Um, but, you know, what I see a lot of is actually they're running three triple tactics tasking, which is a card that was revealed a while ago. Basically, it's like triple tactics talent, except if you, first of all, you don't have to activate the main phase. And second of all, you just, you get a spell and trap from your deck. So that's where all these one-ups are coming from. They're playing one dimensional barrier um, and then also an ultimate slayer as a sort of a removal card to search off the triple tactics tasking. So they're playing the NTSS in the extra deck for that. Um, Kit Catalyst, even though it's not a tier element deck, this can add the Cash Tira, tier elements Cash Tira, and you can just use Instant Fusion to grab it, which is crazy. So basically, this card gets you two monsters. Again, so stupid, but I mean, you know, it is what it is. I guess this is the, the way of Yu-Gi-Oh! now, right? Instant Fusion is a totally broken card. Somehow, this deck only has one Max C in it. I thought Max C would be a three in every deck, but I guess not. I mean, there's just, there's all so many one-ups that you need to play, and then, of course, um, you get the one cross-out, and then two Call by the Grave. Definitely interesting that they still really heavily value cross-out in the OCG. So yeah, that's that. Another weird thing I noticed, I mean, they're playing Reaper in the extra deck, or in the side deck, that makes sense, but Silent Wobby, I don't understand this card, because theoretically, it should do the same thing as Mushroom Man. It doesn't take your normal summon, but this deck doesn't normal summon anyway, and secondly, your opponent gets to draw a card, uh, maybe it's just for time scamming, I, I don't actually know, um, because it just doesn't make any, you know, like, Mushroom Man seems like a better card, because... It has all the benefits I listed. It, it can't be linked off into Donner with the uh, with the Cash Jira Rise Heart. So that is just insane to me. Actually, um, this is really really cool. I mean, I'm a big Red Maju player, and Red Maju is one of those those really cool cards that's like just has gotten better with time because of the the Banish support. I think that's super cool. Obviously, I don't think this is like super overpowered or anything, but I just think it's hilarious. Like sometimes this game shows its age and in an, in an era of like e-girls and, you know, weird looking stuff, we just still get to see some of this old classic Yu-Gi-Oh art uh, stealing some matches. Um, so that's all I had for you guys today. I just thought this deck was super cool. Um, and I love talking about stuff that I think is cool on the channel. So thank you for watching. I hope you sort of understand now how Mushroom Man number two is used. If you like the video, uh, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, just let me know what you think of Mushroom Man number two. And are, are there any old cards that you can think of that have found modern resurgence in decks and just make Yu-Gi-Oh! probably one of the most beautiful card games to play? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you all in the next video.